Hello, I'm Angelia. Welcome back to Read and Reread. Today I have a very small, tiny, teeny tiny book haul to share. And the reason why it's so teeny tiny is because of the current situation, which you can get a little glimpse of in progress right there. But we are packing. Our moving date is, I think, exactly three weeks from today. <clears throat> so we're going to, we're trying to, I am trying to stop bringing uh, too many books in or having things on order that, you know, may or may not get here at the right time so that things are packed in an orderly fashion. And I kind of put a halt on library because there will be a change of library and, you know, just stuff like that. So I have plenty of books from the current selections in my shelves to tide me over for a few weeks. And I'll have uh, some of those in my August TBR video coming up in a few days. But I do have a few books that came in recently to share and some thoughts or expectations for these books. So I'll show them to you right now. And these will all go into my, um, well, one of them maybe not, and I'll explain why in a minute, but they'll go into my, my possibility pile for August as well. All right, so the first one is Gaudy Night by Dorothy Sayers. And Dorothy Sayers, of course, uh, uh, wrote the rather lengthy series about Lord Peter Whimsey, which are mysteries. And I guess um, the time period, uh, maybe I should have looked this up in advance. I don't know how time-wise these correlate to Agatha Christie's time period, but I'll, I'll check that out. But anyway, I kept hearing about Gaudy Night from uh, other people's videos as being um, one of the outstanding books in this series. So I got a copy. But then as soon as I looked at it, it says, the third classic mystery to feature Harriet Vane, Harriet Vane, companion sleuth to the dashing, perennially popular private investigator Lord Peter Whimsey. From the writer widely considered the greatest mystery novelist of the Golden Age. So maybe she actually, I think she might precede Agatha Christie? I'm not sure. Maybe a little earlier. But anyway, um, when, once I saw that it was the third one about Harriet Vane, I did some quick research and I did find out uh, from the experts at Goodreads that you should at least read the two Harriet Vane books that precede this book. This book's actually the tenth book in the Lord Peter Whimsey series, but you can either read the whole thing or you can read the two Harriet Vanes before you get to this one for the context. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, get a hold of those first two. And if I really love them, maybe I'll circle back and read some of the other Lord Peter Whimsey books. I really have never read any of them. I was aware of them. And when I was a kid, my parents used to watch the BBC productions of them. This is back in the 70s. And I do remember being very amused as a little kid to come in and they were watching the unpleasantness at the Bologna Club, which cracked me up because I didn't know it was Bologna, like B-E-L-L-O-N-A. I thought of like, my Bologna has a first name, that kind of Bologna. And um, so I thought, oh, there's like these old stuffy British guys at the Bologna Club and, you know, there was an unpleasantness. <laughs> so... Anyway, I, there are some good titles. The very first book in this whole series is called Whose Body? So, uh, like Agatha Christie, some of the titles are amusing. But So I'm going to hold on to it, but I think I need to go back. But if I am wrong, let me know, or any other thoughts about how to uh, go into this series so that I can enjoy this book. So that's Gaudy Night, which I'm excited but now I'm kind of annoyed because I wish I had noticed earlier that that was in the middle. All right the next one is actually sourced out of my own bookcases. I actually got this a few months ago at a library book sale but I sort of lost it in my shelves. I guess I put it away instead of setting it aside with um, TBR books. And it is The Anatomy Lesson by Nina Siegel. And then I came across it again um, just recently when I was uh, going through the books and looking for things for my video about um, why haven't I read this. 
Which, by the way, I did not know that that was actually a tag that people have done that has certain categories and questions. So when I put that title on there, I didn't know I was like copying a tag. I just thought, I just sort of randomly thought, I'm going to collect some books I've never read and talk about why. So I, I didn't know I was, you know, doing a tag and then not really doing the tag. But anyway, so if you got to that video and you wonder why I didn't follow the format, because I had no clue. But anyway, I found this book and I hadn't had it very long, so I didn't include it in that video. But The Anatomy Lesson by Nina Siegel is a historical fiction novel and the author was inspired by the painting The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicholas Tulp by Rembrandt. And she says in a little introduction that when she was a kid there was a print of this painting in her father's study and then later when she took an art class they had to choose a piece to do a reading, an interpretation of, and she picked that one and she actually began to research and she found out um, the story of the man who's being dissected, who was a criminal, they, they obtained his body and I guess at the actual event of this dissection Rembrandt attended because he was commissioned by the Amsterdam Surgeons Guild to make this painting so he was there, um, and Rene Descartes, the philosopher, was there because he, is, he was, it says, in the course of his quest to understand where the human soul resides. So I'm thinking, I don't think he saw that in the dissection. And then some other people, I guess, that were there, and she has decided to fictionalize um, the the victim or the you know the cadaver and what his backstory was and what happened in his life and she created a character of his lover and put into the story as well so <clears throat> that sounds interesting to me I'm gonna give this one a try pretty soon I'm gonna put it in my uh, pile for August and I might choose it and my husband thought it looked interesting too so we may both read that the next one is an old classic that I have never had a copy of. It might be a little bright there, but it is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Did I pronounce that correctly? And um, this edition I got on Thrift Books, and I think this is an edition from the 90s because it says since its original publication 55 years ago, but it's been a lot longer than 55 years now. So I think this copy is, you know, add another 20, 25 years to that. But um, this, of course, is the classic novel about a young woman who is the second wife of a man whose first wife was Rebecca. And I, I, been wanting to read it for years and I've never had a copy a nice hardback copy that I could get a hold of so now I do and I don't really know if Rebecca in this book is an actual ghost or if it's like a psychological kind of thing um, I try not to read too much about it because I haven't read it and I want to enjoy it for myself but I'm excited to finally get it because it has always sound like something right up my alley and I've never never had it so here it is, at long last. And then my final uh, acquisition in this uh, little bitty book haul is a brand new book that I'm also excited about, and it is Siren Queen by Nevo. Uh, a few months ago, I read her last book, The Chosen and the Beautiful, and I really, really liked it. And that one was a re-examination uh, or a, a different perspective of The Great Gatsby with um, some magical realism, queer characters, and the main story being told by Jordan Baker, who in Fitzgerald's Gatsby is a side character who is the girl that Nick is dating during the summer of all the things that happen with Gatsby and Daisy. So she's front and center in this book, and a very powerful, not this book, The Chosen and the Beautiful. Um, she's a powerful character, and I really enjoyed that book. So this new one, Siren Queen, 
with I mean just I mean look at this cover I mean I know smoking is not glamorous but it looks really the smoke and the and the woman it looks very glamorous and it takes place during the uh, old Hollywood pre-code Hollywood <clears throat> and it says I'm sorry I don't know where my voice is going today no maids no funny talking no fainting flowers Luli Wei is beautiful, talented, and desperate to be a star. Coming of age in pre-code pre Hollywood, she knows how dangerous the movie business is and how limited roles are for Chinese-American girls from Hungarian Hill, but she doesn't care. She'd rather play a monster than a maid. But in Luli's world, the worst monsters are not the ones on screen. The studios want to own everything from her face to her name to the women that she loves, and they run on a system of bargains made in blood and ancient magic powered by the endless sacrifice of unlucky starlets like her. So, like, that sounds intriguing. And I really love the previous book. I really, I think I really like this author, Nevo. So I'm excited. And then, of course, I did judge a book by its cover because the cover is very alluring. All right. So that is it. That's like my little bitty haul of four books that I've recently acquired. And I don't think I'll have another haul unless... You know, I trip up and lose my mind over the next couple weeks. But I feel like it's going to bubble up inside, and then there's going to be like some sort of um, housewarming book extravaganza on the other side. So that'll be something fun to look forward to. So let me know if you read any of these. Any thoughts? What should I begin with? And especially if you can shed any light on the mystery of where to start with the Lord Peter Whimsey. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great day. I'll be back again with Friday Reads. Bye.